Well, hello everybody and welcome to After Church Tea Time. Apologies for the delay in coming online. We've got a bit of a, had a little bit of a technical hitch. Um, Lisi will be joining us shortly. Um, I have with me Angie and Nikki. I'm Rachel and we're going to be talking about the subject of today's sermon, which was drifting. So, um, Angie and Nikki, do you have any insights? that we can start off with? Yeah, a lot of insights. Uh, um, just to start off with, um, in general, uh, that has been a topic that we have been experiencing a lot uh, in our journey as well. There is this time that you heal, do the work, you feel really great and you feel confident, as Lisa was saying as well. and that builds up but then uh, something happens and boom uh, you feel like oh i'm back to, to the first step again but that's not the case it's just uh it's just indicating uh, if you're drifting or in the places that you you may be drifting and where you can also be easy on yourself and uh, have the discipline that lisa was mentioning as well with the uh, Set, setting up yourself for success yeah and uh, I feel like that's really comforting in a way when you when you actually build your life in a way that you can set up yourself for success and when the hardship moment come when the challenges come you you will also have the strength to overcome them yay we have we see. <laughs> Uh, speaking of challenges, um, our power went out about 15 minutes before this, and um, we were going around looking at the breakers and trying to fix everything. And you know, you have you have to just go with you know what what you can do. And um, it was really a, a moment where uh, you know I could have been like knocked out of my peace and drifted, but it's like. It's a very fitting thing to have happen, um, you know, in the after church tea time because we're talking about drifting and staying focused on your goal, no matter what challenges come up. And uh, we went down the street to find a good signal, and then we got a message saying the power was back on in the neighborhood, and here we are. So <laughs> it was it was good. It was, um, it, of course, challenges aren't fun, but you can navigate them in peace and find solutions faster if you don't allow ego to come in and um, whip up its its terror. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks for your patience. Yeah, well, challenges, yeah, that's why we talk about as well. Um, but drifting, what exactly is drifting? Like being pulled out of your peace, um, powerlessness, listening to the voice of fear. Um, but just before the talk, um, I think Neelan was talking about how in Life Purpose you want to bring love to every place that feels bad about your life purpose. And when you're doing the mirror exercise, there's a danger of drifting there. It's like drifting away from what you're healing, and becoming distracted. And that's similar to... And what I learned about um, meditation, if you forget the object of your meditation, if you forget the thing that you're healing in the mirror exercise, then it becomes the it, it makes the practice become useless. You have to be mindful. So you notice when you are drifting away from what you're focusing on and bring your focus back onto it. And if you can do that in your daily practice then you can extend that into the rest of your life so that um if you, do, you know, if you feel yourself being pulled into old habits and patterns and start to drift you can center yourself quickly and that will enable you to move through challenges in everyday life very quickly and you know you've got to that place in your inner work as well when you um have upsets come up and you're able to move through them quickly and effectively. 
Yeah, that's so true. And um, I think what you were sharing about uh, where your focus is, um, like paying attention to peace and focusing on love is really important because when you're, when you realize that you have command of your consciousness based on what you're focusing on, you can direct it uh, in any moment to focus on peace or love or focus on fear and anguish. And um, you can be tempted by the fear and anguish to focus on it, but you, you actually have command of your consciousness and what you're choosing in any given moment. Um, I think it's important to, to see that if you don't remember that you have command over your choice, uh, then you leave yourself susceptible to to ego coming coming in and um, directing your thoughts, and uh, that that I think is important. And I think I've been I've been learning that a lot, especially this this year. Um, in the example that I shared in the sermon, where uh, kind of like our ship wasn't pointed in a straight direction for a time and how that caused our ship to kind of feel a little bit like off course and adrift. And it's really important to remember where you're headed or remember where you're pointed. And ultimately that's into God and that's into love, but those have like specifics, um, like specific coordinates here on earth. I really like I uh, really loved and really appreciated this sermon because it's like very timely for me and Dante because um, like since the notification that uh, we will have like the Twin Flame Summit this year, uh, we were like feeling into it and we were like kind of avoiding um, looking into it and like we had kind of like a crossroad and we were like there is no reason for us not to go but at the same time we were not looking deeply and like honestly at our finances our um visa stuff that we had to go through and we were like probably we will not go and that's like how we kind of settled in the beginning and then like we were we were just kind of justifying and drifting away yeah. meanwhile for months we were like, we're not going, we're not going, we can't go, we can't afford it, we can't, uh, we, we're not like, Andy, for example, is not a European citizen, so it's like di more, more difficult, he has to go through visa processes, and I was like, in my mind, telling myself, no, because it will take like one year to get a visa, and all of this was just not true. <laughs> yeah, we just now so have the possibility. Of yeah. That. God and the power of God. Yeah, and like we were not being honest and we were like kind of drifting away from that. Even though like in our hearts it just was not acceptable for not for us not to come. <laughs> and like we were kind of like saying, oh, we will buy a car, we will do this, we'll do that. And those stuff I felt in myself that okay, yeah, they're pleasant stuff. They're like material stuff, they will help us, but what What's the purpose of that? I, I I didn't feel like a true purpose in that. It was more like, oh, keep yourself busy so you don't think about how how not okay it would be not to go there. So I was like, okay. And then like Laurencio, our coach, like literally, literally wrote to us and he was like, are you coming to uh, the summit? And we were like, yeah, well, probably not. And, but at the moment that he asked us, I really felt it in my heart and I was like, I should, like, we should go. Like, there's no reason why not to. Yeah. And like, just to say about like the drifting part that, um, like ego was really trying for us not to go. Mm -hmm. And like, we were feeling more and more kind of lost in a way because and kind of like separated, isolated. So that's what ego wants. Like, mm -hmm. Ego wants you to be like, to feel alone, to feel like you're not included, to feel like you cannot do stuff, you cannot grow, you cannot achieve your 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 dreams, your desires and everything. And like, 
about like the, the the support system that we have with the teaching of union, be that a coach, be that uh, the teaching itself, the classes, being playing ascension school or life purpose class, whatever it is from Jeff and Shalia, like really just keeps you on track. Even like if you're feeling like you cannot do it, even if you just watch a class or like you talk to your coach as we did, like our coach literally just, it felt like a, redirection <laughs> mm. we're like hey you you should come claim it like it's yours like god will support that you're you're meant to come and we're like oh yeah that's true <laughs> yeah. and like just to after that after like we spoke with uh with lao we just like did some basic research and we saw that it's actually a very structured order that we have to follow and we can make it and it's something that is 90 percent possible yeah and that 10 percent is just visa like the visa of andy it was more easier than we we anticipated yeah that. it's uh, that uh, discipline that lisa was talking about yeah. yeah yeah and we have that we have that road ahead so we have to stay focused that's that's our challenge now we have to keep going from in order like from challenge to challenge because i'm pretty sure stuff will come up and we'll just need to keep uh, being disciplined yeah, but therefore this uh, sermon was perfectly yeah. Um... I really liked what you said. I actually wrote it down. Uh, Nikki, you said um, we were keeping ourselves busy so we don't have to feel how not okay it feels to not do the thing, right? The thing you wanted. Like that's, that's so true. Like when, like I feel like some part of us knows when we've stepped away from being in alignment with or divine self or God in like, you kind of have to intentionally numb out and some like, there, there was a choice made to numb out. And then there was a lie told that, oh, we're, we're doing fine. You know, I, I recognize that like in my example, we were talking about moving to Michigan. And the thing is, is uh, like you guys, like after the fact, cause we made a new choice and now we're full steam ahead. And, we just simply follow like, you know, our, our passion and guidance. And whenever the challenges come, we just move through the challenges. That's different from moving aside and not going ahead. But um, we did some research and we found like, Hey, cause Josh just started culinary school down here. There's a culinary school up there and it's actually higher ranked than the one he's going to. And, um, I have a feeling that his, his credits will easily transfer if he wanted to start next semester, for example. But it's just stuff like that where, like, you tell yourself a story um, ahead of time. Oh, that's going to be too hard. Or, oh, we're not going to have enough. But we see examples of it time and time again where when somebody goes all in, all the doors open. You see it on the Twin Flame journey. You're seeing it. And I, I can't wait to meet you because I can... I feel you guys are going to get there. Um, Us but, as well. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be great. And I I can't wait to be at the summit. I mean, my my heart is like, well, why don't we just move there and, and not have to get a hotel and not have to worry about the travel expenses. And then, um, but we'll, you know, that's, that's my desire. And I'm not wavering from that desire. And we'll see what God does after that. But, um, but yeah, that's that's really important to um, like have that goal. And um, one other thing about goals and moving in that direction is it kind of like like I get the image of a ship, like a big steamboat, like with its big engine pushing the boat forward, and you have a lot of momentum, and you have a lot of momentum in other areas of your life too. Um, like when you're moving forward, it's like you're magnetizing a lot to you because you're you're in, not just in flow with God, but you're um, you're moving ahead with God. Like you're doing it intentionally, and it's just it's such a big energy. Um, and so that's another reason why people manifest miracles when they're moving forward in that one direction and closing back doors to you know, escape hatches or whatever it is that you do in fear. But yeah, 
That's cool. I'm glad you guys are going to the summit. Rachel, are you going to come to the summit? I'm sorry. I don't mean to put you on the spot, but um, thinking. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm looking into it. We'll see. Um, yeah, but um, what you were saying about numbing out, you talked about numbing out a little bit in the um, sermon um, about how when you do numb out, you're basically relinquishing control or you're not in control of your life. That's when you, you allow life to happen to you. And I was like, I think the word control is used more in, here in the context of powerlessness. That's um, something that probably we're all working through all the time as an ongoing thing. And I recently had um, a reading from the dashing young Drake, and he said that he's got a wise old head on those young shoulders, and he said, ego will try to make you bow down to it. So don't allow that. You have the power to say no to ego. You don't have to give in to it. You don't have to believe what it says because it's never true. It's always a lie. And you know, being um, easily influenced by external things and other people is something else I learned with um, my Buddhism. You don't get too excited or too high when someone pays you a compliment. Because if you do, then you're very susceptible to getting really upset when you're criticised. But too up and down. But remain centred, remain peaceful. But you, so you, don't, you don't have to be uh, influenced by external things. Nobody has the power to make you feel anything. Uh, triggers are just feelings being triggered that may have been there for a very long time and if it feels bad then you don't want to be walking around with those lower energies in you so you know nobody will trigger you like your twin flame and um, they will bring those feelings to the surface so that they can be cleared so they can be acknowledged so they can be released and yeah, and then you can continue, progress, grow, expand because you're not being weighed down by these things anymore. But it's all in you. You don't need anything externally. You don't need validation from other people. So be validated only by God. It makes you super powerful. You need nothing externally. I like what you said, Rachel, about nobody has the power to make you feel a certain way. Um, and that actually, um, I flipped right to the place in the book where Jeff and Shalia share that. So I'm going to read that. Your twin flame and your other relationships are not obligated to do the mirror exercise or heal an upset between you two. You alone are responsible for your happiness. No one has power over you to make you feel any way whatsoever. That is huge. I invite you to meditate on the power of my previous sentence, because if you do, you will ultimately realize how freeing that is for you and for other people and your relationships with them. You'll never desire to play victim again or enable others who are playing that same behavioral pattern because the truth is too powerful. So yeah, that's, that's really good. And um, yeah, I just want to kind of share again, because I always think things happen for a reason. Um, so earlier this morning when our power was out, I, I have to admit, you know, I was tempted to, to freak out and be like, I can't come. And oh, you know, um, why did this happen? And what kind of gremlin lives in the matrix is sabotaging me and things like that. And I, it didn't feel good, but then I I just settled into resolving the issue in front of me. Went downstairs, checked the breakers. Breakers seemed okay. Phone didn't have battery. Had to go charge it up in, in the car. Had to go to a place where there was signal. 
And I kept continuing to say no to those temptations to, to choose fear and give up and not show up because that, that was insanity. Like, of course I would come, I will to be here. And then we got a, a notification that our power was off in the neighborhood and they had turned it back on. It was like a transformer, a tree limb had hit or something like that. So it, when you keep choosing love and you choose to be or do um, and bring yourself into a place, like nothing can stop that process. Not even things that would come up to appear to challenge you there. And, and I actually think it's a really beautiful example from this morning that can apply to anywhere on your life. So for example, a lot of people uh, on their twin flame journey the twin flame's not talking to them or their twin flame is with someone else. And then, you know, they open up their Instagram and they look at a picture and their twin flame is with, you know, Sally and they, they just got engaged or just had a baby. And that's like, Oh, that, that feels bad at first, you know, but this is giving you the next piece to heal. The next, um, the next block within is being revealed and you just simply heal it with the mirror exercise. You commit to your harmonious twin flame union with, with your divine self, with God. And when you move through these challenges and you let go of believing the lies or the illusion that the, the challenges are trying to convince you of, then you can actually move through them much swifter and, and arrive at your destination here your peace here and then it manifests on the outside swifter. So um, when you're challenged, uh, do start to, you know, tell yourself, like, I choose to move through this. I choose to keep going forward. Um, I choose to never give up and I choose to, and then you're what you're moving towards and then God will help you move towards that. And everything will clear much faster when you do that. So, good. I love that because I see myself having like a pattern of drifting, uh, mainly when I have like some breakthrough and then like from that breakthrough, I tend to get high for a specific time. And then like that's bloom and boom. <laughs> that happens and when the boom comes I tend to have like a pattern of holding on to not moving through my feelings and I'm like I start staying in the upset until and I and I give my power away that's the thing and I like the sermon was perfect about that because I'm like yeah I see that I tend to give my power to outside things and like not see that I have the power in my own life. It's like I have a breakthrough and I feel like maybe I cannot achieve anything else or like my purpose there that I had focused is complete. And now I feel like kind of purposeless. And then I have to specify what I want to do and what I want to focus on next. And then I'm like, okay, like you have, power <laughs> make a choice to get up <laughs> and like focus on the next thing like it's it's normal it doesn't end there um so when this happens and i'm like god like give me a sign what what should i do and i'm like i want to move through this like i choose to move through this i don't choose to stay in this energy anymore it's like very very heavy and god is like watch class mm -hmm. and i'm like oh okay <laughs> And then I watch a class and I'm like, oh, yeah, perfect, as always. <laughs> and then, like, I get into the flow again. Yeah, and, and, like, right now I'm just, like, learning to have, like, a shorter period of time from something that I achieved to focusing on the next thing and not, like, having that time of, oh, you're resting, but it's not resting. It's just, like, it's, it's drifting, actually, because I'm not focused. Yeah, it uh, requires training as well, because with our old thought system in our uh, previous life, 
before uh, finding out about these teachings, uh, there is this subconscious thought that, oh, okay, I cannot do this. Uh, I'm supposed to give up now and I'm supposed to leak my energy here. It's not that you do that intentionally, obviously, but it's there. And that that's basically the drifting. And when the time comes that you actually uh, experience a challenge, you have that thing from your past, and this is you, uh, the now you, and you're like, okay, will I be choosing the thing that I still have there that I haven't fully healed? Or will I be choosing to stay focused forward and mm -hmm. actually, yeah. actually release that thing from the past? And as you do that, you kind of like train, train yourself. And uh, that training is also the wisdom yeah, that you receive. Yeah, I relate to that a lot as well like um my coach chrissy was telling me about how i would come up to this one block in my twin flame union and each and every time i would get there i'd kind of like back away from it like what jeff and shalia talk about in um the class about the cave of fear and i would get into the cave in this this one place i go through the other caves but this one and i'd kind of like step back a little bit and um, because I felt powerless and I felt like, how can this possibly resolve? But recently I've been just staying there and being present with myself right there. Even if I don't know how to move through it, well, the how is in presence and that, that really, really helped. And so uh, one of the challenges that I've been facing in my union for five years, it, it, I made a lot of ground on it recently and that was just, wow. <laughs> I'm feeling a little emotional about that because it's just, I'm so grateful. Um, and just like what you shared, Nikki, like the classes, you know, whenever I feel like, okay, I, I'm ready to commit. I don't know what my next step is. And I watch a class and I get inspired like instantly. And it's like back on track. Um, and I, I feel like, uh, People, there's a misconception in spiritual worlds, spiritual circles that I've I've heard people say, um, especially like misinterpret the law of attraction, where you know when you're flowing with God, the doors open really easy, and it's like zoop zoop zoop. And some people believe that when there's resistance, that that means you're not supposed to go that way, and that's that's actually a very common spiritual belief in our new age spirituality is like you know flowing with god is like easy but it, it is easy but um challenges are easy and sometimes i think it, it takes a while <laughs> to notice like when you're moving forward and then you hit a block and you feel challenged and you're like okay well i'm gonna step aside over here maybe the stepping aside gives you a temporary pleasant feeling um, of, of false safety, security, whatever. But then after some time, you got this feeling in your heart, like something just doesn't sit quite right with, with stepping backwards here. You're stepping to the side because I, I wanted this there was a big block there and I thought I wasn't supposed to go this way, but this feels bad. And so then our loving father in heaven <laughs> helps our hearts to become aware that stepping aside and stepping away from our goals doesn't feel good. And then thank goodness that we have coaching and twin flame ascension school to continue to help point us in the right direction and to give us confidence that we can move through those challenges that, that we may not have felt confident to move through before. Excuse me. Yeah, my um, coach, especially recently, has been really pushing me to uh, go to a really uncomfortable places. You know, the ones where we really don't want to go. And she said, "But well, you can't just heal the stuff that you want to heal." You've got to heal what needs healing. Even if it's unpleasant, even if it's repetitive, might be parts of it that um, that even feel a little bit boring, like, oh, not this block again. 
but um that's um sometimes what's required um if you're healing a block you just continue until it's completely healed however long that takes so it's about staying the course because the challenges will arise just like our ego rearing its ugly head to try to derail you and but please know that when you're getting close sometimes the challenges that arise seem pretty horrendous but the truth is you've actually earned them because you gained enough mastery to be able to move through the boss level upsets whereas at the beginning maybe um it would have been too much it would have been overwhelming so if you are seemingly faced with huge challenges um give yourself a pat on the back it's a compliment to your mastery and and as and you'll find that the more you progress <clears throat> the more mastered you get the more you raise your vibration the more you align with god the more energy you've got to move through the difficult upsets so you, you're able to do it easier so i don't see yeah it, it's like literally building spiritual muscles you're climbing the mountain of ascension and it may seem hard but you're getting huge quad muscles as you do so it will get easier and easier even if it gets steeper and the steeper it is the sooner you get to the top that's beautifully said the gaining spiritual muscles is really important especially if you want to sustain and uh, grow in your harmonious twin flame union because when you're together with your twin flame oh it feels really good it really does and you can do more as a union than you could as two individuals but the challenges that you're faced with maybe they're more challenging than they they were when you were apart but you do have the spiritual muscles to handle them and that's another reason why moving through your challenges is is important to not drifting away from them is important so i'm curious um is anybody you know do you have like a anything to say about a spiritual discipline that you practice every day to kind of help your consciousness um, to stay purified and, and not not susceptible to drifting. Well, the mirror exercise. And um, I used to be very lazy with writing it out. I write it out all the time now. Um, yeah, several times a day. Yeah. yeah. It makes, it makes a big difference to actually physically write it out. And then, of course, um, that can be your primary spiritual practice. It's the, um, I told you you need communion, but you can, you can do it with your own favorite spiritual practice, whatever that may be. It goes with everything. Like a, like a black t-shirt. Anyone else? Yeah. I, um, for me, it's, yeah, the mirror exercise. Having, like, as soon as I wake up, I have this thing of check, checking in with my dreams. And, like, checking in with the dreams that I saw. Because I have, like, this thing of, I get a lot of messages from God from my dreams. For example, when I'm unclear about something, I ask God, okay, show me what this situation is about or what is the block here that I'm not seeing. So I check in with that. Then I would like to have it because I got also inspired from DC having like a scheduled um, watch a class time. Um, I tend to do that once in once a day or once in two days. Uh, sometimes I watch multiple classes depending on how I feel. If they're like 
screenplay massage of full and then like life purpose class i tend to watch them together um but yeah like i know that i can grow more there and i would like yeah i chose to have like a more structured uh, discipline there spiritual discipline okay for me obviously it's a mere exercise and uh, recently i've been starting to really go back to what I was doing in my childhood, which is physical activity. I stopped doing that uh, for some years, but when I return to that feeling of how much that helped me spiritually, I started doing that uh, now as well, and now I'm committing more to sports. I'm also a big writer. Like I don't know if it's called journaling specifically, but I like to reflect on my life and when I gain an insight I have a place where I write all of the stuff that I have in my mind and that kind of really helps me spiritually because it's like something that I know that I something that I know that I have expressed externally and uh, I have it there and I can uh, with, ha have it there to reflect and on it again and I have the thing that I do daily that I sit and look in the long term, like reflecting a long term journey of me, where I was, uh, where I'm going, where I'm now, and how are things unfolding? If something feels bad, um, I see through it wh what is really happening. And uh, yeah, this is basically what I do, but I'm also looking forward a lot currently to uh, start doing more physical activity outdoors. Because currently I, I do it at home, but yeah. I do that too. Josh and I committed to walking almost every day. Um, it was, when was it? Started late November, maybe it was December, late, probably mid, mid to late November. And uh, getting outside and walking was just really nice. Committing to eating fulfilling healthy food in divine dish has been like a one like really superior in all of its ways and not just in the quality of food that you're cooking but in the structure of divine dish of having knowing what you're going to eat uh so combining that with exercise because we're we're spiritual beings here on earth um and our bodies are really important and we partner with them and i notice um my focus is sharper when I'm eating right and exercising and meditating. And I, I also like, like uh, we shared, you know, I committed to watching one class a day for me, it's heavily life purpose oriented. Um, but I'm splicing in twin flame Ascension school sermons. Um, I've watched all the classes a couple times. And so now the sermons are, are like just, such juicy nuggets of healing and focus. Um, I just, I love it so much, but it really helps me to unify everything. So like, I guess I'm, I guess we're getting close to closing time, but just kind of draw everything together. Um, the exercise, the eating, the watching tea fast, even getting my nails done. That's, that's all part of the one uh, focus and that is to love God's children um, to live my life purpose it's all connected it's all so that I can do my best and give my best and be my best um, and keep growing so what do you think uh, Rachel do we have any comments or anything coming up um have a look Oh, I'm in the wrong place now. Um, From 
what I see, we don't have any. Uh, okay. Okay. No, we don't. Okay, good. Do you feel you have anything else to share, anybody? I don't know why I completely forgot to mention now uh, while everyone's been talking about the exercise. I, I'm really into my swimming every day, and well, that's made a huge difference all around. Like doing the mirror exercise before swimming, after swimming, it all, it all feels great. Well, don't forget to claim your ticket to the Spiritual Life Summit. Um, we can all meet each other in person and it always galvanizes your journey and really like it's like a big force when it comes to spiritual energy and resonating throughout all of your eternal life and throughout the world. So if you have not claimed your ticket, don't hesitate and this is your sign to go claim your ticket. All right, well, if we're all feeling complete, then thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you, bye.